Hey, with the trade deadline coming up, what does it look like for the Halos to be buyers? We like that, don't we? It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SiriusXM by searching Locked On Angels. And the best way to help us out is by giving us a rate and a review. And those watching on YouTube, make sure that you're subscribed and click that bell to be notified every time a new episode drops. And today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use our code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Thanks for being here for this episode of Lockdown Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, aka the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Hey, it's our second season here at Lockdown Angels, and our second trade deadline, Mike. So we're excited to get into what it would look like if the Angels were buyers at the deadline. Last week, we talked about being sellers and which teams could afford Shohei Otani. We're going to talk about who we might buy as the halos. Now there's some obvious choices floating around out there. Um, we're going to take a look at those. We're going to take a look at some choices that might be more than rentals, which would be interesting for the halos. And then consider some dark horse candidates that baseball world isn't really talking about, or might not even be considering. So before we get started, let's agree on a few things. First of all, we know this, this is purely who the angels could go and get a whole other conversation can be had about who the angels have to give up. And we'll right. get into that conversation later, Mike, on another episode. Uh, so that's the first thing. The second thing is relief pitching is probably priority one, followed by starting pitching, and then perhaps a position player after that. So we've got a lot of pitching and a few position players. Right off the bat, we're going to avoid guys like Scherzer and Verlander, just because I don't think the Angels would take on those salaries. Um, Shane Bieber and Corbin Burns are fighting for the NL and AL centrals for their respective teams. So I don't think they're going anywhere. Mike, you and I talked about Scott Barlow from the Royals. However, I've come to realize that he is just a better 2022 Jimmy Herget. And I think Ooh. we need some hard throwing guys rather than some funky guys. Right. Plus his walk rate is a little higher this season. So he's not quite the guy that we would want. So let's get into the uh, the obvious targets everybody's talking about, Mike. All right, so we're going to start with a guy that you've mentioned a couple of times and Locked on Angel viewers and listeners have mentioned, and that's Marcus Stroman. Mm -hmm. He's on the Cubs right now. He's 10-7. and seven. He is a starter, 309 ERA, 122 and a third innings, 105 in the uh, strikeout category. He's got a 1.14 whip and a 145 ERA plus. Like Johnny's that. only given up seven home runs all year long. So mm -hmm. that's actually a, a really good thing. Um, he's avoiding hard contact, mm -hmm. which is another really good thing. 210 average against. Now here's, here's a number that mm, might be interesting to consider. 339 BABIP. So batting average for balls in play. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the balls that actually get hit are, are finding their way into the outfield. They're finding their way on base. Johnny has a 57.8% ground ball rate, a 16% fly ball rate that actually I think would translate well at Angel Stadium. Mm -hmm. $21 million club option for 2024 could go up to $25 million. Uh, and it is complicated with the Cubs because they are just, at the time of this recording, they are just five games back in the wild card behind a bunch of teams. They're all kind of bunched up, and they've won six of their last ten. So Cubs have to make some decisions on what they're going to do. But Marcus Stroman is a name that's out there, and he might be somebody that the Angels might consider. Blake Snell from the San Diego Padres, of course, is a starter on an expiring contract. He's six and eight, but he's got a 2.67 ERA, 108 innings pitched, 143 strikeouts, a 1.278 whip, Mike 153 ERA plus, meaning he's 53% better at pitching than league average. He leads all of MLB in ERA. He's second in the National League with 11.92 Ks per nine. He's got a 203 average against and a 287 BABIP, so under that 300 mark is where you want to be when it comes to BABIP. But do the Padres even sell? They're five and a half back in the NL wild card. They're 48 and 52. Nobody knows what the Padres are going to do. Right. <laughs> 
I don't think the Padres know what they're going to do. No. Even the players on the field, right? And so I think they're all kind of shocked that they are actually in the position that they're in. Uh, another name that's been thrown out there, another starter, is Lucas Giolito mm-hmm. from the White Sox. Now, the Angels have had some success against him. He's 6-6, six and six, a 3-7-9 ERA, 121 innings pitched, 131 Ks, 1.2 whip, and a 116 ERA+. plus. 25.8 K rate, which is in the 67th percentile, 66th percentile in whiff rate. His average against it's 232, 279 BABIP. So that's not too bad. White Sox obviously are sellers, Johnny. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, but the Angels would have to compete with teams like the Dodgers and the Diamondbacks for this guy. Yeah, Joe Kelly's another White Sox, uh, but he's a relief pitcher. Um, he's one and four this season, 466 ERA, 29 innings pitched, a 1.241 whip, a 95 ERA plus. Mike, he's a hard throwing middle reliever. We could use a 99 mile an hour sinker, 99 mile an hour fastball, a nasty curveball, a 56.2% ground ball rate, and a 32.3% K rate. Wow. 230 average against and a 329 Babbitt for Joe and Kelly. A, and, and a big lower lip. Remember when he mm, yeah. the Astros? <laughs> <laughs> Must have been great on the audio side when I did that. Okay, so let's talk about Jordan Hicks. He's a yes, relief please. pitcher for the Cardinals. Uh, numbers don't look too flattering, but wins and losses don't get caught up in that when it comes to a relief pitcher um, or any really pitcher. Obviously, his other numbers are better, but he's one in six, a 376 ERA, 40 innings pitched, a 1.5 whip, and a 116 ERA plus. He's a hard thrower, John. Mm-hmm. Uh, triple digit sinker and fastball, a 58% ground ball weight r- rate, a 31.5% K rate. Like Johnny's in the 92nd percentile in exit velo and 81% percentile in hard hit percentage uh 89th percentile in expected batting average 98th percentile in expected slugging 87 percent uh, 87 seventh i can't easy for me to say seventh <laughs> percentile in whiff rate and then a 92 uh 92nd percentile in barreling percentage so he's he's putting up some really good numbers his underlining numbers are actually pretty impressive yeah and the uh the k rate too 31 and a half percent yeah hey a lot of people ask about jordan montgomery and jack flaherty starting pitchers from the cardinals i kind of group them together here's the thing of the two jordan montgomery is going to be the more desirable one there he's more reliable He's healthier. He's got better stats. But Mike, the Cardinals have had issues with their starting rotation this season because they've relied on pitch to contact guys. Yeah. And that's why they're struggling. They didn't anticipate running up against the lack of the shift and they built up their rotation around soft contact guys. So the good news is that somebody like Montgomery might be available. It might cost you some starting pitching in return to the Cardinals. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then there's one name on here, Johnny, that is always intriguing. And that's David Robertson, 38 um, years old, baby. Yeah, and he's just still, <laughs> he's just still going right. He's like, dare I say like the Tom Brady of major league baseball, not as yeah. successful, but he yeah. just, he just keeps going and going and going. He's four and two relief pitcher, 208 ERA, 43 and a third innings pitch, 48 K's. 1.0 whip, a 200 ERA plus, which is really great. Mm-hmm. 201 average against, 257 Babbitt. He's he's a guy that gets guys to chase, to swing and miss. He's a veteran presence. Gosh, the thing that we've noticed with this team is that shutdown inning, especially from the bullpen. Mm-hmm. And Matt Moore gives it to you, and Carlos Estevez gives it to you. David Robertson so far has been a guy who gives it to you as well. Can you imagine a some some form of more Robertson and Estevez in seven, eight, and nine? Like that would be a really great seven, eight, nine, adding to what we already have in the bullpen. John, looking at this list of names that we've gone over, who is more likely in in your fan guided wisdom here? Who is more <laughs> likely to, if the Angels are buyers, who is more likely to show up and be on this Angel team after the trade deadline? I'm I'm looking at the guys like uh, mm, I get, I could see them wanting Joe Kelly I could see them mm-hmm. wanting Jordan Hicks and I could see them wanting David Robertson because I think relief pitching is going to be the priority yeah um, I think that probably the easiest one there will be Joe Kelly in terms of what you got to give back um, I think about like Jordan Hicks who is again the the cardinals need a big change in their rotation so that's going to cost you some starting pitching mets are interesting because they're <laughs> who knows what they're going to do they're right. kind of like the padres right. right so as much as i'd love to see a starting pitcher like snell or marcus stroman i think the most likely 
out of these guys is going to be one of those relief pitchers when it comes to the uh, the obvious targets. Hey, by the way, the Angels are playing the Tigers today, and the game starts at 3.40 Pacific time. It's Griffin Canning versus Eduard, Eduardo Rodriguez. And funny enough, he's on our list in the next segment. You can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast on SiriusXM with the SXM app. Just search Angels. And coming up on Locked on Angels, would the Halos target Mitch Keller as a trade candidate? Or would they go for somebody like another Tiger, Michael Lorenzen? We're going to get into all of that coming right up. Today's show is brought to you by the Game Time app. With the Game Time app, buying tickets is fast and easy. Game Time has deals on tickets right up until the day of the event. No matter where you go, you can get flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. The Game Time guarantee means that you'll always get the best price and you get event cancellation protection. On the Game Time app, you can buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Two taps in your set. You can see the images of where you will be sitting, uh, sitting, and, and then you'll know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Tickets are sent directly to your phone. Don't have to dig through any emails. And if you find tickets in the same section in row for less, game time is going to give you a credit of 110% of the difference. So grab tickets without all the stress with the game time app. You can download it right now, create an account, and then use our code. You're welcome for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account, use our code locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. I should have used game time to crash your Saturday night game and, that you didn't invite me to. That's what I should have done. Get over it. <laughs> Thanks for making Lockdown Angels your first listen of the day. Lockdown Everydayers, join us every day this week as we recap each game against the Tigers, a crucial series and a crucial moment for the Halos as they approach the trade deadline. That's why we're talking trade deadline on today's episode and who the Angels could target. The Angels are back at it, 3.40 Pacific time. Catch every pitch of the Angels' hometown broadcast on SiriusXM with the SXM app. Just search Angels. Johnny, in this segment, we're going to talk about those players that are more than more than rentals, like yeah. potentially maybe get some controllable players, some, some right now types, and then possibly have them for later as well. So why don't you get us kick-started with a really interesting name? Yeah, if, if the Angels are going to be giving up prospects that play a role in their future, why not set your future for the next few years in stones and get some controllable players out there? And this is our first position player of the day, actually, Mike. Um, and it got me thinking as his name came up, I thought, oh, yeah, people want to see that. And a lot of people asked about this. Our Locked On Everydayers asked about this. And then I got into the numbers and went, oh, He'd be really good on this team. Mm. That's Jonathan India, mm. second baseman for the Reds. He's batting 251, a 338 on base percentage, 411 slugging, 749 OPS, Mike. 14 home runs, 12 stolen bases, 68 runs scored, and 51 RBIs. Mike, let me ask you a question. Would you like a second Zach Neto at the plate on this oh, team? Heck yeah. Because that's what we'd be getting. Huh. Okay. <laughs> you have a guy who doesn't chase often. He makes a ton of contact in the zone. 88% of the time is what the stat is on fan graphs. Hmm. Defensively at second, he's got a negative 0.1 ultimate zone rating. So the, the stat that kind of comp compiles all of the defensive metrics you would want to measure in a defensive infielder or outfielder, um, Neto has a negative 0.5 UZR at shortstop. So That's surprising. India is negative 0.1. And Neto is negative 0.5, which is still not terrible. So right. the negative good. number yeah. is not the worst <laughs> yeah. thing in the world. Yeah. Um, the Reds are looking for controllable starting pitching. We have that. He's arbitration eligible next year. He would be a free agent in 2027. Mike, Neto and in India up the middle. Wow. I'd get really excited about that if I were uh, if I were in charge and making a move there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's an intriguing name. Here's another interesting name, a familiar name, and I'm going to take you back to pitching for just a moment, and mm -hmm. that's All Star Michael Lorenzen from that's right. the Tigers. Now, Lorenzen is five and six with a three point four nine ERA, hundred innings pitched, seventy six Ks, a one point zero nine walk uh, WHIP, uh, which is great, and then a one twenty four ERA plus. Here's what's changed from Lorenzen last year that we saw versus Lorenzen this year. His walk rate is down, mm -hmm. Johnny. 10.7% mm -hmm. walk rate in 2022, 6.5% in go. 2023. His chase rate 
has increased this year as well. Now the Angels did want him back. Remember, they wanted him back this year, but there were oh. some concerns about. I'm sorry, the Lorenzen wanted to be. Lorenzen back wanted Angels. to come back, Angels. and the Angels, yeah, and the Angels kinda... were concerned about his health. Yeah, and because he was out for a bit last year, he did miss the beginning of the season with the Tigers, but he's pitched in 17 straight starts and has pitched pretty consistently. Tigers signed him for one year, 8.5 million. Maybe the Angels could trade for him and then possibly extend him. He was an intriguing arm last year, and to bring him back in, I think, would be intriguing. I, I you know, when you look at like the big names like Lucas Giolito and things like that, like you're gonna have to give a, a lot and compete with sure. other teams. I could see the Angels being sneaky because this feels like a Perry Manassian kind of sneaky move to get somebody like a Michael Lorenzen. Well, you know he wants to be here too. So if you can yeah. trade for him and extend him and then anchor that middle part of your rotation. He's not your ace, but he's a guy that you can rely on and he's having a great year this season. Right. Speaking of great years compared to last year, Eduardo Rodriguez, Mike, starting pitcher for the Tigers. He's 6 and 5, a 2.69 ERA, 83 and 2 thirds innings pitched, 88 strikeouts. Listen to this, a .968 whip, so under wow. 1 and a 160 ERA plus he's getting it done by avoiding hard contact. He's 77th percentile in average exit velocity, 80th in hard hit percentage, 61st in barrel percentage and 70th in chase rate. So he's really doing really well on the mound in terms of avoiding the hard contact, getting guys to chase, inducing weak contact. Now, listen, he's getting 18 million this year, then 16 or I should say, no, 18 million next year, 16, and then 15 until 2026. Wow. And 15.4 million of that goes toward the luxury tax. So while he will cost 18 million, the 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 salary against the luxury cap is 15 and a half million. Hmm. So depending on the cost, it could be smart to consider him. Uh, he could stay and play a part of this rotation until the end of 2026, but he's got an opt out next year. So he could help us out this year decide he wants to stick around that would be great if not then bye 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 right <laughs> see you later <laughs> but let's talk about two pirates pitchers that we saw this last weekend david bednar and mitch keller let me talk bednar for a second he is three and one with a 1.15 era 19 saves his era plus is 390 mm -hmm. 390 mm -hmm. John. like this guy has been really really good in fact if you look at all of his percentile rankings He's in the red and pretty much to the right on all of them, which is which is really good. Yeah. Uh, Pirates said that they're willing to listen, although I'm not sure they're going to be up for trading. The, they're listening in the same way the Angels are listening on Shohei Otani. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes. He's arb eligible. He's arb, arb eligible through 2026. He's got a 38.6 whiff rate on a splitter. Uh, that splitter would be nice in the Angels bullpen, John. I would and love for us to have a splitter. I, he'd be a great addition to this bullpen. I think we'd have to give up a lot for him. And another guy I think we'd have to give up a lot for is Mitch Keller, right? Yeah, starting pitcher for the Pirates. Again, they're listening on him. He's not likely to move. But again, the point of this segment is, can these guys be more than just rentals? If the yeah. Angels got to spend prospect capital, can they get guys who stick around for a few years with the Halos? And can we help them out with, with their needs as well? Uh, listen, for Keller this year, he's 9-6. and six. He's got a 4.01 ERA, 128 innings pitched, 137 strikeouts, a 1.195 whip and a 112 ERA plus he's 85th percent. He's in the 85th percentile for average exit velocity, the 87th in hard hit percentage 60th in expected batting average hmm. and 70th in walk rate. So he's not putting guys on base all the time. He doesn't get a lot of chases, but he has gotten uh, barreled a lot this year. So that's kind of the one thing against him when he does give up contact, it's, it, it can be the heavy part of the bat that the ball is hitting uh, a 236 average against and a 292 BABIP take a lot the, for the angels to get him, but yeah. he is uh, controllable until 2025. I keep hearing uh, Eric Kratz voice when they were on here from foul territory saying, you're not getting Mitch Keller. You're not getting, you're not Mitch, getting Mitch Keller. Keller. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dylan sees is another white Sox pitcher that his name has been out there. Hasn't really been great this year. He was second in Cy Young voting last year. His issue this year, Johnny, he's been hit really hard. He's got a 44.9 hard hit percentage in 2023. It was only 31.4 last year. Mm -hmm. His slider is not performing like it did last year. His fastball location has been an issue. I think, he's fixable our problem is matt wise and yeah. and, and matt can matt wise do that uh the, the cool part about dylan cease though if you get him he's arbitration 
eligible until 2025. So you yeah. get you get some some good years in there. You got a guy who was second in Cy Young voting last year. And man, I was really trying to figure out what was going on with his slider when I looked at the numbers. And it's just, I, it, it looks to me like it's not as tight as it was last year. So it almost seems like the opposite problem of Reed Detmers, who was throwing mm. it too hard and getting really snappy movement as opposed to, you know, long horizontal movement on his slider. I think the opposite is true for Dylan C's. But also, if you look at the heat maps, Mike, it's just the it's the location. So something there is not working for Dylan C's. And it would be interesting to bring him over and then have some controllable years on him to see if you can figure out what's going on with him. All right, let's talk about some dark horse candidates, the the potential targets that maybe nobody's really talking about, mm-hmm. but maybe like one or two people who are smart baseball fans are talking about. The first name is an interesting name from the Rockies, Johnny, and they've already made a trade with the Braves uh, earlier yesterday. But Brent Suter is somebody with the Rockies who's in their bullpen. John, he's had a really good year, 4-0, yeah. 2.62 ERA, a 1.09 whip. He is a lefty. He's only allowed two home runs all season. And remember, he's pitching in Colorado for a lot of those games. Mm-hmm. 215 average against a 262 Babbitt. Doesn't give up hard contact. 80, uh, 82.5 average exit velo. That's good for 100th percentile in average exit velo. So that's that's fantastic. And and again, another lefty out of the bin, out, out of the bullpen, and and one who's pretty reliable and has been for the Rockies. I looked at his numbers and I looked at his pitches. I'm like, Oh, this is a good Aaron loop. That's who this is. Ah, okay. <laughs> so okay. just to give you an idea of what he looks like on the mound, Mike, another Rockies pitcher, relief pitcher, everybody's going to be, you know, picking apart the Rockies relief uh, pen or their bullpen, because yeah. that's where all the good ones are. Daniel Bard. Um, he's four and one this season, a 2.02 ERA 35 and two thirds innings pitched 32 strikeouts a 1.318 whip, a 253 ERA plus. He avoids hard contact. He's in the 91st percentile in hard hit percentage, eighth in average exit velo, and he's signed through next year. So he's Mm. another one of those guys that if you put up the capital for him, you could have him for more than just a rental piece. All I can remember with Daniel Bard is what happened in the WBC. Uh, like yeah. Just kind of falling apart. Although he hit Jose Altuve. And so a part of me as an anti-Astros fan. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, let's, just talk, <laughs> let's talk about Carlos Hernandez for a moment. Uh, he is somebody you've mentioned who's in the Royals bullpen. Yeah. Uh, his numbers aren't, aren't, aren't too bad. He, he is 0-6 win loss. Uh, they, they've been points. using him as a, as a starter and a yes. reliever so that, that just ignore swing, that man. win and loss record right. yeah 3.86 era 49 innings pitch 57 k's 1.02 whip and a 113 era plus he's been the setup man and is currently the the setup man now that chapman was traded he's got a 99 mile an hour fastball so mm-hmm. really hard fastball 83rd percentile and k percentage 78th and chase rate 78 and whiff rate 204 average against and a 270 babbitt John, this is pretty remarkable. 6.6 walk rate. So mm-hmm. he's, <laughs> that's the thing we need on this team, right? Like oh, these, yeah. these guys can go 0 and 2, and then suddenly it's 3 and 2 with right. these, these Angels. And they can't get that first pitch strike. That is the most frustrating thing about this Angels starting rotation and, and that bullpen to have somebody like Carlos Hernandez that can come in and he's going to get strike one, strike two and strike three. Like yeah. that would be, that would what be a, what a concept. And he's yeah. controllable until 2027 so that could be a really beneficial trade if the angels end up pulling the trigger on him we have double carloses at the back of the bullpen mike because like i said if you watch clips of carlos hernandez it will feel very familiar the way he throws the ball like and the way that he gets guys to miss like it feels a lot like carlos and then you put like a matt moore in between those guys like you can go from hernandez to Moore to estevez and like you're gonna throw that team off whoever's whoever you're playing, like that would be a a good benefit for the angels. Mike, this one I think is the most dark horse candidate that we could muster because number one, it's not a pitcher. It's not a starter. It's not a reliever. It's a utility guy. Hmm. And he was third in rookie of the year voting last year in the national league. I'm talking about Brendan Donovan from the Cardinals. He can play second base, third base, the outfield, He's played all over this season. He's actually even played some shortstop, funny enough. Uh, But listen to his stat line this season. 
281 batting average, 368 on base percentage, 427 slugging, and a 795 OPS. Wow. That's good for a 118 OPS plus. So in the same way that ERA plus, it tells you that 100 is average, uh, OPS plus is the same stat for hitters. So he's 18% better than league average hitting. He's got 11 home runs, 42 hmm. runs scored, 34 RBIs, and he's a lefty bat. And like I said earlier, he's a utility guy. He can play everywhere. He's played all over this season for the for the Cardinals. Third in rookie of the year voting last year. It would cost the Angels a lot, but here's how I see it. They, the Cardinals, have a position player logjam hmm. over there. And like I mentioned before, they have relied on these soft contact guys and it's just not getting the job done. If you're wondering why the Cardinals are not in playoff contention, it's their whole rotation is in shambles. And so while they have a surplus of position players, they're going to want to deal with a team like the Angels, who could offer a Chase Silseth, who could offer a Kai Bush, you know, whatever they think they need in the immediate future. And that's why I think it's valuable that the Angels have so many college arms that they got from the last couple of drafts because these guys are ready and raring to go and mm. so maybe we haven't seen them in the majors yet but maybe they get traded to a team like the cardinals and then they're ready to go for the birds but mike what do you think about brendan donovan coming over as i look at the entire list including brendan donovan i think that when i look at brendan donovan i see somebody that reminds me of brandon drury who's injured mm. right now Mm -hmm. And, and if I'm, if I'm the angels and, and looking at our entire list, Donovan uh, also is injured right now, actually, is he? <laughs> but he's coming back soon. Yeah. And, and yeah. that, and that's the thing about this team is that once these guys get healthy, I think actually it's going to really benefit our team. So if I'm going to make a move, if I'm GM PM and I'm going to make a move, I'm going to focus on two bullpen guys mm -hmm. and one starter. Okay. Who and, they be? And, who, and, and who would they be? <laughs> I think I would, I would get, I would try to get a Joe Kelly and a David Robertson okay. um, or, or maybe a, uh, Car it's a Carlos. Yeah. Carlos Hernandez. Um, I, I even like uh, Brent Suter from the Rockies. I think I would go after those types of guys. And then if I'm going to get a starter, I, I don't know if I'm going to break the bank for a starter. So I think I'm going to actually pursue like a Michael Lorenzen because I'm okay. probably going to pay a lot for bullpen guys. And I wouldn't want to pay a lot for everybody. I know that we need starters. I already hear people typing uh, Torrid, I hear you typing. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. And I'm, and I, I'm, I'm up to being wrong, but I think I would prioritize bullpen at this point over starters, just because we need our bullpen and a good bullpen in the playoffs and in August and September is always better than having a whole starting rotation and a hole in the bullpen. How often do you see starters go four innings pitched? five innings pitch in the playoffs. You see yeah. that a lot. Yeah. And, and you see them make moves really early in playoff games. Right. So I'm with you on the bullpen. I think bullpen is priority one. I think starting pitching, look, all of the trade rumors and everything is all starting pitching. It's yeah. all relief pitching. So there is, everybody's in the market for that right now. And I think if the angels can fly under the radar somehow and get the guys that not everybody's, looking at whether whether that's like a carlos hernandez or something honestly i just think that prioritizing the bullpen and then a starter i think is the way to go i would love to have a giolito or a strowman yeah. or oh, a, for sure or a snell i i'm just considering can the angels compete with the other teams who also want those guys on their yeah. team yeah hey thanks for making lockdown angels your first listen of the day Angels play the Tigers today at 3.40 Pacific time, and you can catch every pitch of the Angels' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. Hey, give us a follow on Twitter at LockedOnAngels and at SuperHaloBros on Twitter and Instagram. I'm not calling it X. I'm not doing it. That's so <laughs> stupid. Uh, I think this guy is just trying to, like, you know, have fun since he spent so much money on the damn sure. thing. Now he's Why just not? like, I'm just going to see it, push this button, see if it works. Why not? <laughs> not my money, his money. <laughs> what a bozo. Right? <laughs> anyway, Mike, what do we have on deck for tomorrow's show? So we're going to talk about Hunter Renfro and maybe we found the reason why he's been on five teams in five years. Hmm. And something that you said to me off air, we're going to talk about on air. How did we miss it? We're going to talk about that tomorrow on Lockdown Angels. Looking forward to that conversation. Thanks for tuning in today. Hope you enjoyed the potential trade targets that the Angels could go after. If they're going to be buyers, we'll see what happens after this week, honestly, against the Tigers and the Blue Jays. Until tomorrow's show, my name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Thanks for being here, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.